I love this music. My second wife introduced me to this music. <coughs> so I love to listen classical like Bach. Let's start doing something. I'm so bored with marketing and selling. So the page, 24 by 36, it's an opportunity the universe gave me to express myself. There is within space and time, within this opportunity, certain already predisposed conditions. Pandora's box paradox, God, DNA, some guy on his knees who found love, two beating hearts. But this time they are not printed as hard as usual. Here are cosmic dice. Here are some stars, should be a pyramid, Aphrodite flowers should be here. You see it? So these are pre-existing conditions. What can I do with those? This is what I'm manipulating. I'm creating additional obstacles before I even start the drawing. You understand? What do I want to draw? I want to draw myself. Okay, here I am. And I'm walking. I have a backpack and I'm a traveler. I never settle down. Just like in my real life, I don't care to have a furniture anymore. I don't care to settle down. I don't have, I don't, my children grow up. I don't give a shit about anything. You understand? I want to live like a traveler, like a, like a, uh, like a traveler. But at the same time, this symbol became my uh, symbol of cosmic reincarnation. If I paint stars and a shooting comet, it will be a symbol of a traveler, cosmic traveler. But in this composition, it's not going to be made out of light, as I usually do. Like in Hinduism, the, the picture of Atman is, is a creature made out of light. It's not a dog, it's not... A, so the, the, the shape of my soul, apparently, is made out of light. And I discovered it in meditation when I was 21 years old. Uh, so, here's the guy traveling. I also would like to talk about nature of life, organic life. How do I express something organic? Well, usually these are those unpredictable vibrations and shapes. When you look at anything organic growing con continuously, it's changing shapes every day. So I would like to uh, reflect it that things that grow and change, including myself, they evolve every day. So there must be some element, visual element, of continuity in, a, in time. So this tree, for instance, I depict as a symbol of organic life in the universe. Uh, Greek mythology is called Gaia. You know, Gaia doesn't matter. If it was Helen or, or Barbara, it would be the same shit. It would have the same meaning, you understand? It's just a name, Gaia. And it's ancient name, it's pre-Indo-European language, uh, uh, which is from where I come from. You know, all the languages in Europe and India, they were born in the area where I was born. But I'm not saying Russian language is, is, is really connected that much to Hindu, that much to England, English, <coughs> because it transformed over 20,000 years. What else? These are emanating powers of the organic roots of Gaia. I just made them not like roots, but like those rays, because I want them to become rays. You understand? I want them to become rays. I want them to become energy, and the roots I want to look like DNA. I got this one DNA within the space and time, as to say, DNA is everywhere, in the soil, in the air, there's someone else's DNA on your skin, bacterial DNA. I also would like to show that Gaia on Earth is a concept, but it's planet Earth, and she has great powers. So I incorporate super volcanoes, and sometimes they're exploding. Sometimes my super volcanoes are exploding. I have to make sure I'm moving camera as I'm moving hands. So the volcano will be smoking onto Aphrodite. So it's a, it's a metaphor to say the great volcanic powers of Aphrodite, the daughter of Gaia, 
are in this smoke, right? And I want to show the great powers of Aphrodite, but at the same time, I want them to be gentle. I grab this pink and this stupidly, and I make something stupid. Why did I grab it pink? Because it was sitting there. I might as well gra grab yellow, okay? No difference to me personally. And I'm applying these two colors. This is a chalk for children, for a sidewalk, but it's pretty durable, actually. It has a very interesting consistency. It goes into the paper really deep. It really digs in, and it's different to those pastels. Those are professional pastels. They don't stay on the surface as good as this sidewalk chalk. So sometimes you need to discover technology uh, characteristics of technology for yourself by yourself nobody will tell you that unless you meet Andrei Bogoslavsky the greatest privilege in your life so you become an artist you could become an artist if you spend enough time repeating your own ideas and training yourself so basically you make yourself into a great artist you take tips you take recommendations what else I want to paint? I want to emphasize there is a temptation, and I want to symbolize it in the apple of Eden. So there is this bizarre apple, nothing else, and maybe a couple leaves here and there, and they're flying away because it's very windy, right? So the leaves from the tree are flying away. And the apple itself, it's also a metaphor. So it's a concept. So it's not a real apple. You can eat it, obviously. But within my painting, it's not as real as this guy. And this guy is less realistic than actual volcano. Volcano and the tree are the most realistic concepts in this drawing because this guy is a cosmic traveler he just looks casual like he's walking on the, on the, on the grass right there's some rocks here some dog shit, for instance so we put him in this environment but to show that this is natural environment i would like to have some big flowers here close by out of shape flowers because there is too many defined shapes already so I want to do something abstract, but yet everyone will understand these are flowers. So I am concerned whether people understand my symbols. I'm a human being and I speak human language. And then the same goes in art. I want my art to be understood properly. I don't want people to look at my shit and say, wow, this is so fucked up. I really want to buy this. No. I want people to look at my art and say, oh my God, these are epic ideas. The most important thing human can even think about. You're talking about destiny, Aphrodite, fucking love, reproduction, children. I guess I was wrong because this yellow feels like wax. No, I wasn't wrong, okay? They're both, okay. It just felt a little bit uh, waxy over here. I have wax for this stinky, a lamp, you see this lamp? Oh, here it is, shit, I was looking for it. So this lamp makes this smell, and I bought this expensive wax, but I didn't realize, where the fuck is it? Um, there, that this expensive wax is actually soft. It's softer than the candle wax. And if I, for instance, make a heart, right? So it's invisible barely visible and it's fucking blue i don't want blue so when i smoosh the charcoal over it something interesting is happening you see the special effect of smooshed wax is interesting it's like this heart that is smooshed of course i can put more wax and be more gentle and emphasize the shape of a heart made in wax so i discovered this trick just two weeks ago and this is what I'm teaching you. I'm encouraging you to discover new tricks, new technologies for yourself. So after 20 years, 10 years, people will say, oh, this is Andrei Bogoslavsky. He used to do those specific nibbles, those specific watermarks within the paper and kids learning from him. And it's the whole movement of gravitationalist artists inspired by Bogoslavsky. And 200 years after my death, 
there will be thousands of genius artists inspired by Andrei Bogoslavsky. So my role on this planet is fulfilled. My destiny as a Buddha bringing the teachings to the universe are, is fulfilled. I'm certified Buddha. I am enlightened because I speak the words of truth. I bring, I bring enlightenment to other people, you understand? I fulfill my destiny. Besides being an artist, besides painting, selling paintings, a lot of fucking paintings, you know, 600 of those big paintings and about 1,000 of that size paintings. I love this music, especially this piece. It's like in a desert, riding a camel. This is fucking infinite. Makes me think of my paintings. Look at this shit. Oh, this is the bottom, okay? So it's like grass. The grass, the flowers I was drawing a minute ago. And this is this fucking bizarre sky with heart, broken heart, and some kind of chain. And the sky itself. This, I love this fucking music. The sky itself is a mystery with these powerful strokes uh, and, and sand. This is sand actually attached onto acrylic. The shit stays for years, for 20 years. The way I paint is bulletproof, you understand? My artworks are bulletproof. If you take a fucking knife and you try to scrape anything or poke it, it's virtually impossible. I tried. And it takes me a lot of hammer work to get rid of this. If I don't want it anymore after 10 years, I want to get rid of it. I take this hammer and I hammer it off. Otherwise, it's not going to come off. So my paintings are tested as bulletproof. This is linen. This is not cotton. And this is what I keep teaching you. If you're going to miss this more, most important point and you're going to continuously paint on cotton, you're going to screw yourself on the long run. 10, 20 years will go by, cotton canvas will deteriorate in oxygen as it's supposed to, and the, your paintings will literally disappear. The canvas will disappear because of the oxygen burning cotton canvas. So you have to use linen if you're looking for people to give you money. Because people who have money for <coughs> original artwork, they know the difference between linen and cotton. They're not stupid. They want those paintings to be inherited by their grandchildren. The paintings I sell, they go to private collections where their grandchildren come to their homes and they compliment my paintings. Yes, 15 year old kids are complimenting paintings. Grandma got hanging there on grandpa and, and these are Bogoslavsky paintings. They're even telling me that somebody's fighting already over the paintings, who is gonna inherit it. But it's besides the point, you understand? The question is, what is the quality of your art? This is the question. What is the quality of your self-expression? Are you truly expressing your ideas? Are you being true to yourself? Are you talking about issues that are, that are important to you? Or you're talking about BS? Because if you are not talking about your personal issues, the freedom, the beauty of, of the day, the landscape, 2005, this is a fucking masterpiece. Thousands of people made compliments for 20 years and I didn't want to take less than two and a half thousand dollars because it's a small piece. So nobody's really inspired to give me so much money. But I have a collector who's very serious about this one. I couldn't ship it. She said ship it in, during COVID, but I couldn't ship it. So it's 600 bucks. She buys from me for 20 years now. She owns a lot of my paintings. This is my girlfriend's favorite. And my girlfriend's taste in art is the highest level of artistic education. And the same goes for this collector. There are two separate people. She's an older lady, yeah? She's my mother's age. Uh, but she still buys art. And uh, she wants to buy something big, like the size of the wall. That's her usual. But she fell in love with this. And this is an immediate indication that this woman knows what she likes. Look at this hidden tree over here. You see this? I attached the branch of a real tree and it became this invisible tree behind the clouds shit and it's a miracle as you look closer it's like look at the sky they're so organic looks like a creature the clouds is a creature reaching out to abyss the infinite 
the infinite behind the stars.